think I'm turning into a lumberjack. It started out with a love of woodworking and a need to clear some trees on my property. And now I'm milling my own lumber to build rustic farmhouse style furniture and wearing plaid. I've bought a lot of tools over the years. You know, hardware tools like chainsaws and tractors and software tools like SolidWorks. Usually my projects require a bit of both types of tools. Like today, I'm gonna to use SolidWorks Flow Simulation to study some of the tools in my shop and see if I get to buy more tools. Sometimes we find out that the first tool you buy, like my first chainsaw, just can't keep up with the volume and the size of the job. You're working way harder than necessary. Others, like my tractor, literally multiplied my productivity and expanded my ability to pull roots and move logs. If you don't have the right tools and accessories for the job at hand, it becomes harder and more dangerous than it needs to be. Here's a simple example. I built this speaker out of an oak tree that I cut down, and to get this really cool curved shape, I did a bunch of sanding, which made a huge mess in the garage, and the dust really started to mess with my sinuses. So I hooked up a shop vac, which is all I have right now, and it slowly clogs the filter with dust, which reduces the suction, but I'm too stubborn to constantly stop and clean it out. So I wondered, is the shop vac the right tool for this job? It's time to do some math, but this is some fun math. So I'll start by building a quick model of my belt sander. It doesn't need to be a perfect model, but I did make sure the relevant dimensions were right. I used some photos to get everything going and spent some extra time on the details in the air passages. I tried to find a cool looking shop vac model online to download, but I didn't like any of the ones I found. So I just made a really simple one and added a flexible hose of the correct length and diameter using routing. Setting up the flow simulation study for something like this is fairly straightforward, but I'm going to create a separate tutorial video to explain the entire process from start to finish. How to make the assumptions, where to get the specific information, so you know exactly what's going on and why I set up everything the way I did. So be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get notified when that video gets released. The belt in this case is defined as a moving wall. The roughness is based on the grid of sandpaper I'm using, and the speed is based on the speed of the motor. I found a fan curve online to represent the shop vac. Now, using a fan curve in this case is important because the flow rate can change based on the pressure drop, and I don't know what the pressure drop is for that hose and that sander, so I'll just let the software auto-adjust to give me a realistic result. To represent the dust, I ran a particle study representing the most common sizes of sawdust, which I don't know what those sizes are, so I asked the Googles. One study I found talked about particle sizes by weight in the sawdust that they collected, while another looked at what particle sizes are most likely to be inhaled, which can cause health concerns. So I ran particles in both ranges. I created a parametric study, so I could quickly cover the range of flow rates Obviously, zero suction is awful. Particles of every size go flying everywhere, including into the air. Now, the shop vac at full power, though, did grab the majority of particles, but it wasn't strong enough to grab the really coarse chunks. So I have a bit of cleanup to do, which is fine. What surprised me is that even at 20% flow rate, it was able to grab the majority of the smaller particles, including all dust in the rest bulb range, which is really my biggest concern. So I ran a quick test to validate the results and compare the animations. And it compares really well. If you look closely, you can even see some of the large particles skipping out even when the suction is on, which is what the software predicted. Now I had one more thing I wanted to do. Since I had the model set up, I'm in the process of building a workshop with a more permanent dust collection solution. So I figured I'd go ahead and run one more test. For this one, I'm plumbing the dust collection for my workbench through the floor and up the wall to a permanently mounted dust collector, one that it won't clog like a shop vac. So what diameter of pipe should I be using? It looks like a 4-inch line is going to be the sweet spot with almost no pressure drop. Using CFD for that last example was a bit overkill. I could just set up an Excel spreadsheet to do that pressure drop calculation. But before I added flow simulation to my toolbox, I tried to do all kinds of calculations in Excel. Some of them took forever to set up, and they were still really rough approximations. I mean, not everything is straight pipes and elbows. Using flow simulation makes any job really fast, and it beats typing out and troubleshooting formulas in Excel all day long. As engineers, our time is limited, and occasionally we're called upon to make some difficult decisions, including some that can affect health and safety. 
So it's important that you have the right tools for your job, you know how to use them correctly and safely. If you want to learn more about the software tools I use and talk about how much value they might add to your business, reach out in the comments or visit us at mlc-cad.com.